welcome to the Midlife Career Rebel, the podcast created for high achieving professional women to gain the clarity, confidence, and courage they need to go after and get the life and career they want. I'm your host, Dr. Carol Parker Walsh, lawyer, social scientist, brand strategist, executive coach, entrepreneur, and midlife career rebel. Each week, you'll learn strategies to manage your mind, navigate the challenges of midlife, and take control of your career so you can thrive doing the work you love. So if you're ready to tear up that rule book and create your own, you're in the right place. And I can't wait to show you how. Hey, Rebels, welcome back to the podcast. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about managing your mind. Now, in the last podcast, I talked a lot about your thoughts, particularly the thought of, I don't know, and how that can generate a feeling of fear that can keep you from taking action and achieving your goals and getting the career you want. Now, if you missed it, go back and check it out because I shared a lot of great information in there. I've said before that I believe career development and career management is an inner and outer game. What most career coaches and traditional vocation career advice gets wrong is that they focus too much on the outer game, the tactics, the strategy, skill development, things of that nature. And they don't give nearly enough time or attention to the inner game, which is your mindset and thought work. Now, while the tactics are helpful, it's the inner game that makes it all possible. And since I'll be talking a lot about this throughout the podcast, I believe it's important that you're clear on what I mean when I use certain terms, ideas, and concepts, and that you have an understanding of my practical and theoretical framework. I think that's just the social scientist in me. As a researcher, we had to make very clear to the reader the lens through which we did our work and how we came up with our findings. So in my coaching practice, I want you to know that I use a mix of cognitive behavioral theory, Jungian and social, and social psychology, and a little feng shui within the context of structural inequity. When I taught graduate and doctoral students, I always told them, don't just read and listen to other people's work without knowing their epistemology or their beliefs and their framework. That's why I think it's important for you to know my various schools of thought if you're going to be a frequent listener to this podcast. So with that said, let's get into how your mind and your thoughts in particular can create what you want in your life and career. Let's start with the difference between factual events that happen outside of you and your thoughts about those events. Events, people, or your past for that matter, are all just circumstances, things that are out of your control. They're simply facts, not opinions, but things that everyone can agree on or that can be proven in a court of law. Events, people, your past, and circumstances Things that happen in the world don't drive your feelings or actions. Actually, it's your thoughts about those events, people, your past and circumstances that do drive your feelings and actions. What you think about those things going on around you are often byproducts of childhood stories, narratives, beliefs, as well as familiar societal and cultural beliefs, things that you've adapted and programmed your brain to accept as the flat out truth. While you can always change your thinking, what you can't change are the events, the people, your past, and all of those circumstances happening outside of you, no matter how much you want to. Now, our instinct is to try to change those things with our actions. We think if we try harder, do more, say more, speak up more, whatever we think, if we do certain things, that that's going to change the things around us. But honestly, that's not how it works. We only have control over ourselves and over our thoughts. Now, we sometimes think our thoughts and subsequent feelings are out of our control, That is the outside things or someone else's comments or actions or somebody said something or did something. We think that's what's causing us to think or feel a certain way. But that's not true. And it's often a really hard pill for people to accept. I have problems with it at times. That's because we live in a society steeped in blame and victimization and not a lot of personal empowerment and accountability. I mean, catch any episode of any of the Real Housewives programs and it's pretty easy to see that. But the hard truth is you are in control of your thoughts and feelings. No one else, no matter what they say or do. 
stay with me on this because I know this can be really hard to manage and to really accept. We've never been taught to manage our minds. Now, as women, we've been taught to manage our actions. We've been taught to be sweet, not to be too aggressive, not to toot our horn, to always be polite and gracious, right? Remember sugar and spice and everything nice? But we've not been taught to understand and manage our minds. But once you do have an awareness, you also have a responsibility and accountability to yourself. Ignoring it only causes you to deny your own power and ability to change and get the life and career that you want. And let me say a word about positive thinking and affirmations, because personally, I I love them both and use them. But in and of themselves is not enough. It will only get you so far, particularly if you're steeped in the thinking that you're at the mercy of how other people treat you or what they say to you or what happens around you or the things that happen in your home or at work. And let me say, not every thought needs to be a positive one for you to achieve what you want. Sometimes a neutral, non-negative thought can actually do the trick. And when we try to force ourselves to only think positively all the time, We really don't give ourselves permission or even sufficient preparation to handle or withstand any of the negative things that come our way. And negative things happen as part of the human experience. There's good and there's bad. So we can't always live in this idea of positiveness because we have to learn to manage our mind through the good and the negative things that may happen in our lives. In theory, these concepts I know make sense and are simple. You maybe even heard them before. You maybe even adapted them in some way intellectually. But like I tell my clients, mastering it takes time, commitment, work, and a daily practice. This is something I work on every day. And once I learned how to do it, it completely changed my life. It is doable and it is transformational. If you allow yourself to really own these principles and to adapt them into your daily practice. But let me share a few examples so that you can see how it works and what I'm talking about. Let's start with something simple. Say it's 85 degrees outside, right? This is the weather. It's a fact. It's a circumstance. It's not debatable. We can look at the temperature. We can look at the weather, woman or person, and they will tell you it's 85 degrees outside. Now, when you read the temperature, however, you may have a thought that it's way too hot outside, but that doesn't make it true. It's just your thought about the temperature. Now, someone else can read the temperature and think, wow, this is perfect weather. Now, this sounds honestly like a conversation between my husband and myself, (laughs) because that's pretty much how we think about the weather and 85 degree temperature, very different. Now, if you think it's too hot, what will likely come up is a feeling of uncomfortability, like being out there would be uncomfortable. And because you're feeling uncomfortable, you may then take an action or make a choice to not go outside. But if the other person thinks this is perfect weather, they may feel excited. And that feeling will lead them to take the action of going out and from their perspective, enjoying that 85 degree weather. So can you see how it's not the fact that it's 85 degrees outside that made you decide to stay in the house? It was your thought about the temperature being way too hot that drove you to have a feeling of uncomfortability. And because of that feeling of being uncomfortable, you decided, I'm not going outside. You took an action, which is to stay in the house. This is how a lot of people get into arguments, right? We'll tell the other person that it's 85 degrees and it's way hot. And when they say, like my husband says to me, oh, please, you're crazy. It's not that hot outside. It's beautiful. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? It's 85. Everybody in the world thinks that's too hot. But that's not really true. That's what I think. That's what you may think. But not everyone would agree with that. The truth is, that's just our thoughts, That's just our thoughts about 85 degrees. And others are entitled to their thoughts as well. Now, here's another example. Maybe you've applied and interviewed for an internal director level position, but you didn't get it, right? These are just simple facts. You applied, you interviewed, you didn't get the position. Those are just the facts. Now, you could think, well, it's not fair, or I knew they would never hire me. Or this proves that I just don't have what it takes. 
Now, how do you think you would feel if those were the thoughts that you were having about the news that you didn't get the position? Angry, frustrated, devalued, apathetic or unworthy? And say you're feeling angry or frustrated. What actions do you think you would take? Well, you know, maybe you would choose to confront the hiring manager and call him an idiot or say this is bullshit, you know, accusing them of passing you over because you know you're qualified or playing favorites or whatever the case may be. Or you may become passive aggressive and start underperforming in your current role because you feel undervalued. Or maybe you decide, you know what, I'm going to quit. Like, why should I work for a company that's going to treat me like this? Or you can beat yourself up and tell yourself that you have nothing to offer and that you'll never be able to step into a director role, which can ultimately cause you to play small and not really apply for anything better or greater than what you're in right now. Now, another option is that you could think, well, I know I'm qualified, but I wonder how can I improve my chances for next time? A completely different approach, a different thought. How do you think that feels? If you think, well, I know I'm qualified, so I'm not taking it personally. So what can I do better next time? Maybe you'll feel calm, curious, or even determined. And if you're feeling calm, curious, or determined, you may then seek out the hiring manager with a whole different perspective and attitude. You may ask for their feedback on the process and try to understand specifically why you weren't the one chosen and what you can do to improve your chances for next time. You could hire a coach to help you improve your interviewing skills. Or you may ask yourself some deeper, important questions and ultimately discover that this wasn't the right role for you after all, and maybe turn your attention toward other positions that may suit you better. There are a number of ways you can handle the situation because you have the choice. You are in control over how you decide to think about what happened. And because you have control over your thoughts, you ultimately have control over the outcome. Very different outcome to being passive aggressive, thinking I'm never going to get ahead or going off on your boss, than asking questions, doing some planning, getting the support that you feel that you need, and prepping and positioning yourself for something better. But it all comes from how you think about what happened. Now, I know there's a lot going on right now in the workplace and in your life that you're trying to deal with and manage. But to get into the driver's seat and truly take control of your career, you have to become a better steward of your thoughts and your mind, particularly when you're in the midst of chaos and uncertainty. On average, we have about 70,000 thoughts per day. And studies have found that the bulk of our thoughts are negative and repetitive, meaning we play the same tapes over and over again, and they're not necessarily our greatest hits. And since 95% of this happens in the unconscious mind, we have to stop completely operating on autopilot and start paying attention to what's happening in our brains. So let me share with you four steps that you can get started today to start managing that brain of yours. The first is start noticing what you're thinking. Pay attention to what's going on in your mind when you're sitting in meetings or reading emails or speaking to your colleagues or giving a presentation or having conversations with your manager or other people around you. Without an awareness of what you're thinking, you won't learn how to capture every thought and make a change, the type of change that you want to make. The second thing, notice how your thoughts are creating your feelings and ultimately your actions. We all tend to operate out of our emotion, right? If you're angry, you yell. If you're sad, you may cry. If you're impatient, you may snap at those closest to you. But remember, your feelings start with a thought and what's going on in your mind. The connection between what you're thinking and how you feel is often bypassed because we want to blame the circumstance instead of taking responsibility for our thinking. Don't jump from, hey, my name wasn't on the invite for our strategic planning meeting to feeling rejected or left out. Go back a step and ask yourself, why am I feeling rejected and left out? And the thought that's causing you to feel that way will ultimately be revealed then you can do the work of seeing how you can shift that thought to something else. And that's the third step. 
with the deep awareness, you can start shifting your thinking. This isn't about just replacing one thought for another because that does not work. Our brains are way too smart for that. It means sitting down, writing out your thoughts, examining them, questioning them, and then determining which thought would serve you better. Spend some time examining what's going on in that brain of yours. Then determine which new thought will shift your feelings in such a way that you'll take actions that would get you closer to what you want. As I said before, this takes commitment and practice. Remember, many of your thoughts have been programmed in your brain for decades. And if you are in the midlife, you have a good 20 or 30 years of programming to try to undo. And because our brains like repetition, right? Because it's easier to do something that we already know than something that we don't. You'll find that you'll want to go back to your default thoughts and programming. And while awareness is key to start breaking that cycle, practicing this new skill will help you to reprogram your brain to get better results. Now, finally, this is a no judgment zone. Because we live in a binary society, we love to classify things as good or bad, right or wrong, up or down. But don't do that with your thoughts. Don't judge your thoughts as good or bad. They're just thoughts. Some are useful and some are not. And you can determine that based on which thoughts lead you to the results that you want in your life and career. Women in particular love to beat themselves up and feel guilty for things. And if you didn't speak up in the team meeting because you thought no one would listen, don't spend the rest of the day kicking yourself because that thought of no one's going to listen to me led you to stay quiet and not speak up. Learn from it and choose a different thought in the future to get the result that you want. As you learn to manage your mind, please remember this is a no judgment zone. Without judgment, you'll be in a much better position to examine and exchange unuseful thoughts for useful ones. Listen, I know the outer game tactics and strategies are easier to learn and implement, and there's a time and a place for them. I do work with them, I teach them, I support my clients with them. However, if you want to get control of your career and have the life that you deserve and desire, you have to learn to manage your mind and learn the inner game. After all, what you think about, you bring about. All right, Rebels, that's what I have for you this week. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to this podcast so we can continue to get the word out. And if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Send them over to hello at carolparkerwalsh.com and I may even answer them on a future podcast. Thanks for listening. And until next time, have an amazingly rebellious week. If you're loving what you're learning on the podcast, then you've got to come check out the Career Rebel Academy. It's where you'll get the individual help and support you need applying the concepts and strategies you're learning here and so much more. You'll be joined by a community of other rebels just like you, and I'll be there as your guide every step of the way. If you're genuinely looking to change the course of your life and career, I promise you, this is the place you'll want to be. Just go to www.carolparkerwalsh.com forward slash career dash rebel dash academy. I can't wait to see you there.